In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear sisters and brothers, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal mystery, that is to say of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that Jesus entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have also a share in his resurrection and his life. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus and the disciples drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find an ass tethered and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them here to me. And if anyone should say anything to you, reply, The master has need of them. Then he will send them at once. This happened so that what had been spoken through the prophet might be fulfilled. Say to daughter Zion, Behold, your king comes to you meek and riding on an ass and on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had ordered them. They brought the ass and the colt and laid their cloaks over them, and he sat upon them. The very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and strewed them on the, gra- on the road. The crowds preceding him and those following kept crying out and saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was shaken and asked, Who is this? And the crowds replied, This is Jesus the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. My sisters and brothers, the gospel, the good news of the Lord. I invite you to join together in singing our gathering song, which is found on page one of your worship aid. All glory, loud, and honor. All glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children beat sweet Hosanna's ring. You are the King of Israel and David's royal son. Now in the Lord's name coming, our King and Blessed One. All glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children beat sweet Hosanna's ring.
Good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening, depending upon where in the world you are joining us here at St. Ignatius Church in San Francisco. Uh, my name is Greg Bonfilio. I'm the pastor here at St. Ignatius. To my side is Father Paul DeVoe, one of the associate pastors here and uh, our homilist today. Welcome to uh, the parishioners of St. Ignatius and all of those who are joining us from other parishes around the world uh, to worship with us this morning. Thank you so very much for joining us. Those of you who are watching on YouTube or Facebook, um, take a look at that number that tells you how many people are watching with you. And for those who can see the photographs in the pews, there are about 1,300 faces looking back at us here in the sanctuary. Our church, our very big church, seats 1,500. So this church, in many ways, is full. Those are not simply cool statistics to have. In this time of pandemic, this time of social distancing, this is what you and I are able to do instead of looking around in, from the pews and seeing the people who join us, who've gathered together with us as we enter into Holy Week. Those numbers are ways that we are holding on to one another, accompanying one another as we accompany Jesus, begin our, our week to accompany Jesus through his passion, his suffering, his death, and his resurrection. And if I'm honest with you, in this Holy Week, I want Jesus, instead of accompanying him during his passion and suffering, I want him to accompany me and us and indeed our whole world, because we're living out the passion and suffering of COVID-19 and all of its ramifications. I was thinking this morning, in some way, we are, we are living the eighth station of the cross, where Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. They come weeping for him to comfort and console him, and yet he comforts and consoles them. He reaches out to them in his vulnerability, his humility, probably his fear, and his loneliness. So as you and I, as this, as this virtual community gathers at the beginning of this week, let us pray for the grace to be present to Jesus during this week as he suffers his passion and death, and be aware of the places where he gives us advance resurrection, or resurrection, moments of light and life and love in advance of the celebration of the resurrection, the places where he consoles us. Let's pray for those two graces. Almighty, ever-living God, as an example of humility for the human race to follow, our Savior took flesh and submitted to the cross. Graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield, from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have you abandoned? 
release him, for in him he delights. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? For dogs have surrounded me. besets me. They tear holes in my hands and my feet. I can count every one of my bones. My God, my God, why have you Divide my clothing among them. They cast lots for my robe. But you, O oh Lord, do not steal for all. My strength make haste to help me. My God. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord.
Please be seated. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ According to Matthew. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand Jesus over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that time on he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? Jesus replied, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time draws near. In your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord. Jesus said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes, as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. Jesus answered, You have said so. Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and giving it to his disciples said, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, from now on I shall not drink this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it with you new in the kingdom of my Father. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, This night all of you will have your faith in me shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him in reply, Though all may have their faith shaken in you, mine will never be. Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter replied, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples spoke likewise. Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to feel sorrow and distress. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer. My Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. 
When Jesus returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, So you could not watch with me for one hour. Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again. My father, if it is not possible that this cup pass with my drinking, your will be done. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open. And he left them and withdrew again and prayed a third time, saying the same thing again. Then he returned to his disciples and said, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand when the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Look, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs who had come from the chief priests and the elders of the people. His betrayer had arranged a sign with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him. Immediately he went over to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi, and he kissed him. Jesus responded, Friend, Do what you have come for. Then stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who accompanied Jesus put his hand to his sword, drew it, and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back in its sheath, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think I cannot call upon my Father, and he will not provide me at this very moment with more than 12 legions of angels. But then how would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say that it must come to pass in this way? Have you come out against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I sat teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me. But all this has come to pass that the writings of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the high priest's courtyard, and going inside, he sat down with the servants to see the outcome. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward who stated, this man said, I can destroy the temple of God and within three days rebuild it. The high priest rose and addressed him. Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I order you to tell us under oath before the living God whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus replied, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has blasphemed. What further need have we of witnesses? You have now heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They said to him in reply, he deserves to die. Then they spat in his face and struck him, while some slapped him, saying, prophesy for us, Christ. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. One of the maids came over to him and said, you too were with Jesus, the Galilean. But he denied it in front of everyone, saying, 
I do not know what you are talking about. As he went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, this man was with Jesus, the Nazarene. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. A little later, the bystanders came over and said to Peter, surely you too are one of them. Even your speech gives you away. At that, he began to curse and to swear, I do not know the man. And immediately the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the words that Jesus had spoken. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. When it was morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply regretted what he had done. He returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. They said, what is that to do with us? Look, at, look to it yourself. Flinging the money into the temple, he departed and went off and hanged himself. The chief priests gathered up the money but said, it is not lawful to deposit this in the temple treasury for it is the price of blood. After consultation, they used it to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why that field even today is called the field of blood. Then it was fulfilled what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet. And they took the 30 pieces of silver, the value of a man with a price on his head, a price set by some of the Israelites, and they paid it out for the potter's field, just as the Lord had commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor and he questioned him, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus you say, replied, you say so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answers. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had assembled, Pilate asked, which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Christ, the, or Jesus the called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, which of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then what shall I do with Jesus called Christ? They replied, let him be crucified. But he said, why, what evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourselves. And the whole people said in reply, let his blood be upon us and upon our children. Then he released Barabbas to them, but after he had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Jesus, remember. 
Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole, court, whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Weaving a crown out of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there, and they placed over his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself if you are the son of God and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him. He saved others, he cannot save himself. So he is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now and we'll believe in him. He trusted in God, let God deliver him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. The two revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, this one is calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, wait, let us see if Elijah comes to save him. But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. I invite you wherever you are to kneel with us. Please stand and remain standing through the end of the gospel. And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the men with him who were keeping watch over Jesus feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening, and they said, Truly, this was the Son of God. My sisters, my brothers, the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, to you Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ.
As I was preparing for this celebration, someone that had read over the liturgy said there seems to be a disconnect. We start out the liturgy with the people acclaiming who Jesus is. They read the song Hosannas. It's a moment of spirit, of gladness, and of hope. And then suddenly, within five minutes in the liturgy, we're reading the passion and death of Jesus. The whole mood changes. But that's the paradox so often in our life. As the ritual in the church expresses those many dimensions of our life that seem to contradict each other. You know, when we gather, to say goodbye to someone. We use the term to celebrate the Mass, the Mass of Christian burial. And yet people are grieving and mourning. But that word celebration is very important because no matter what, we realize the gift of the resurrection. When people in this church, and I see it all through Lent, where people very devoutly go around and make the stations of the cross. But at the end, what we always realize is there is a 15th station, the resurrection, and that meets a whole world of difference. The resurrection of Jesus gives us meaning. And because of that, in our churches, we can have a special place with the crucifix, as we know, the story does not end with the crucifix. Instead, Jesus raised his son up and returned to him. And to everyone, he said, peace, I love you. And that's the seeming disconnect in our living faith as we go through life. I remember not long ago, I was with a family. And one member of the family was questioning whether she should have a medical treatment. She said no. And what I really found was the real faith that was there. When she said no, she wasn't surrendering. She wasn't giving up. What she realized is at the end of our life, we go on to a new and greater life. And so for her, it was a great act of faith because when I go, I will go home, I will be with the Lord. And so we continue our journey, our journey as we end this Lenten season and go into the great celebration of the Paschal Mystery. Always, we remember that the story doesn't end with Jesus' death, but it continues. The Father raises him up, and Jesus returns to us as our Lord and Redeemer. And the final expression of his love was what he said to his disciples. They may have run away, they may have failed him, but he returns to them and says, Peace, I love you. That's the very word that Jesus addresses us today. Peace, I love you. Father Paul mentioned the journey that we all travel. There is a group of women and men uh, who's been on a very who have been on a very special journey this year. Um, women and men who are choosing to enter the Catholic Church. They're a great gift to us each and every year because they are a sign to us of how the Spirit renews the Church, how the Spirit continues to call the Church into existence. These past weeks, because of the pandemic. 
uh, we have been, been denied the witness that they usually give us during these weeks of Lent. Traditionally, they come before us uh, for three Sundays in a row to be, be prayed for by the community that they were, are choosing to enter, that they be healed and raised up as Jesus healed the woman at the well and the man born blind, and raised up as he raised Lazarus from the dead, and strengthened to be authentic disciples. This would be the final week before the sacraments that they've been preparing to receive for these many months. And so we'd like to acknowledge all of them, all of you today, to hold you up and to pray for you as you continue your preparation, uh, which will be beyond Easter, unfortunately. So today we pray for our elect, those who will be baptized and fully initiated into our church. Kaylee, Lucia, Helen, and Roxanne. We pray for our candidates, those baptized already into other Christian traditions, whom we will receive into the Catholic Church and who will receive the sacraments of Eucharist and Confirmation. Anton, Kendra, Charles, William, and Michael. And we pray for those women and men who were baptized as Catholics and who will complete their sacraments of initiation by receiving confirmation and Eucharist. Lisa, Crystal, Matthew, Jefferson, Benjamin, Eric, Erica, Bao, and Nathaniel. My dear friends, I know that you have continue meeting together virtually as you prepare your hearts and minds for baptism and full communion into God's church. Your Christian journey shines hope onto our Christian journey, and your profession of strength strengthens our, your profession of faith strengthens our profession of faith. And the life that Jesus gives you in the sacraments renews us, all of us, in Christ. And so today, even though we're not physically with you, we are with you in spirit and prayer. And we will continue to keep you there until that day when we can safely gather in this church once again and welcome you with great joy as we join with you as one around the table of the Lord. And so all of you in the RCIA program, whose names I just called, I'd ask you to stand wherever you are. And those of you who are gathered also, if you would hold them in your hearts consciously and raise your hand in a gesture of blessing. Almighty God, bless these, your daughters and sons. Let your truth be the foundation of their lives that they may continue to live in the light of life revealed to us in Jesus Christ. Through your spirit who gives life, fill them with faith, hope, and charity in these days and in the days to come, that they may live with you always in the glory of your passion, death, and resurrection. And fill us all with joy-filled anticipation as we look forward to that day when through your sacraments all of these, your sons and daughters, will join fully with us at the table of the Lord. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now I invite all of you out there joining us virtually to join us in the Apostles' Creed, which you can find on page three in your worship aids as we provided for you. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And we offer our intercessions to God in the name of Jesus, the name that is above every other name. Our response will be God of mercy, followed by hear our prayer. For all Christians, that these final days of Lent may find us more deeply renewed by the mystery of the cross. God of mercy, hear our prayer. For world leaders, that they respond with care and courage to the global pandemic we face as a human family. God of mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. For our elect and those who are preparing to join us in full communion, that they stay close and alert with Jesus as he walks the road to Calvary. God of mercy, hear our our prayer. For those who are preparing to be confirmed, that their hearts be ready for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. God of mercy, hear hear our our prayer. For all those whose names have been entrusted to the prayers of Our Lady of Guadalupe, and for all our beloved faithful departed, especially Andrew Abrams, Kevin Webb, Shelby Hammonds, James Reuter, Andrea Genovefa and Edward Sabini, Joseph Hyanlay, Mauricio Bottle, and all those dying alone because of COVID-19, that as they have shared in Christ's passion, may they also share in Christ's victory over sin, suffering, and death. God of mercy, hear hear our prayer. Eternal God, your presence fills us with awe, and your word gives us hope. Hear our petitions and sustain us on our paths of discipleship, that we may pass over with Christ to newness of life, for he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. As our gifts are gathered and prepared, join together in singing What Wondrous Love Is This on page four of your worship aids.
Please pray with me, my sisters and brothers, that this sacrifice, yours and mine, may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all of God's holy church. O Lord, through the passion of your only begotten Son, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the resurrection Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, Jesus took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, Jesus took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessed your mercy, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be set, poured, out. poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also, together with your Son, 
and in this saving banquet graciously to endow us with his very spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. Make us who are your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all peoples. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, Salvatore, our Archbishop, all the bishops, and the entire people. Just as you have gathered here now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her husband, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our sisters and brothers, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus the Lord. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. in the world, I invite you to stand as a gesture of solidarity with all whom we are praying with together. And let us pray in the words that Jesus gave us, the words that bind us all together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, deliver us from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, may we be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Those of you who have joined us the past few weeks, know that uh, at this time I'd like you to take a moment and call to mind where you sit in your church usually, the people who sit around you, the people that ordinarily you offer communion to, uh, communion for the, the sign of peace to. Hold them in your heart for a moment, in your minds, picture them. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith, hope, and charity of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. So as we offer a sign of peace, again, I invite you to take out your cell phones, your smartphones, and text an emoji or a word of love peace to people whom you love. Peace, peace, peace be with you. Peace, 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 peace.
And as those of us few here in the church will receive the Eucharist, communion, I invite all of you out there to uh, receive spiritual communion. Um, there, there's, there's a prayer in your worship aid that you downloaded, so you can use that. But if you don't have it, just a short prayer, sincere prayer, asking Jesus to come more deeply into your heart, to live there, and in his own vulnerability and humility and kindness, that he meets us in our own vulnerability and humility and kindness. And we long for the day when we are all gathered around this table once again together to do this together. My sisters and brothers, look here. Behold the Lamb of God, the one who takes away the sins of the world, the one whom we accompany this week, the one who always accompanies us. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us receive what we are and may we become what we receive.
O Lord, nourished by these sacred gifts, we humbly ask you that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Parish announcements time, folks. Um, we'll be re- live streaming our, all of our uh, Triduum liturgies uh, and in daily mass as well on our YouTube channel. Uh, the complete schedule of our, of our Triduum and, and Easter services, uh, yeah, they're all there too, um, is on our website. And it's one of the banners on the home page that kind of moves, so you have to wait for it to scroll and, and, and click the one that says uh, Schedule for Holy Week. Um, we've added a special liturgy on Wednesday, a reconciliation service, uh, to which you can join. I think it's at 7 o'clock, but it's on that schedule on our home page. Just after Mass um, concludes, we're going to try virtual hospitality. I understand that many of you last week learned how to use Zoom. So look for the link in the live YouTube chat box, those of you who are on YouTube. Um, it's also on our parish website. If you scroll down on the home page to Sunday Mass Worship Aids, you'll find the link to the Zoom hospitality on that page. And the password to avoid Zoom bombing is Ignatius with a capital I. Okay. A recording of today's Mass will be up on our YouTube channel not later than tomorrow. Again, daily Mass at 9 o'clock, both YouTube and Facebook. Um, neighbor to neighbor, um, if you're in need or willing to volunteer, contact neighbor to neighbor at si at gmail.com or call the parish office. You know, our neighbor to neighbor ministry called everybody in the parish, at least as we have you. Now, some didn't receive a call because we have bad information, so if you didn't get a call, send us your phone number. It might be because you're not registered, so register. We'd love to have you and be able to be in in, uh, conversation with you and to be able to reach out to you in case you have need. You know what I forgot to do is during the time for the the collection, I've been good at this, is to encourage you to support your parishes uh, wherever you are. Support St. Ignatius Parish or St. Agnes Parish or wherever you are in the world. We really, these ministries depend uh, upon you. I want to thank the many of you who have been uh, going online and starting uh, recurring donations. You've been very, very generous sending checks in the mail. I'm very, very grateful. Um, If you're doing that just once a week, please continue once a week. Um, uh, Again, the great work that my colleagues are doing, our staff is doing, is depending upon that. Um, Rice bowls. You know the Lenten rice bowl? Where's my, I brought one out here and I left it in the sacristy. So we usually collect those on, 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 uh, Palm Sunday uh, and give those to the Catholic Relief Services. We're not doing that, obviously. So I would encourage you to go on to uh, the Catholic, there's a, there's a website, CRS, Catholic Relief Services, ricebowl.org, CRS, ricebowl, one word, dot org. And, the, and whatever it was that you uh, fasted from, whatever you saved because of your fasting this Lent, um, make that offering to Catholic Relief Services. Finally, I want to say thanks to all of you who sent in pictures or selfies. Uh, it's quite, I'm very moved uh, when I, and, and there, it's not just people from St. Ignatius. You are from all over the world. So thank you. And we are continue to collect them. As I said, there are 1,300 of you uh, seated with us uh, here today. Um, so thank you for that. Um, send them to info at stignatiussf.org. I want to thank Arlo Boyle for uh, changing our uh, environment into something appropriate to, into Palm Sunday. I'm very grateful. Uh, I want to thank our staff this morning. Father Paul, thank you for your homily, for your companionship. Maggie, for your music and lecturing. Brian, for your music as well. Don, I'm very grateful. Um, and that's it. We look forward to joining you this the, uh, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, uh, at the, and at the vigil Easter Saturday, oh, excuse me, Holy Saturday night, and then Mass again on Easter Sunday. Until then, please, please, please be safe, be careful, wear your masks, wash your hands uh, so we all can come back together uh, safe and, and soon. God bless you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go forth to accompany the Lord in his passion. Thanks be to God. As we go forth, join together in singing, Jesus, Remember Me.
doing work.